Upset alert in Colville. We talked to Logan Judd following the biggest win of the season for the North Summit Braves. Also, a tough loss for the Miners in Brighton. What does this mean for the close of the regular season? And finally, a race in Park City that continues to grow in popularity every single year. It's a brand new episode of The Scoreboard, and it's all coming up right now. Hey everyone, welcome into the scoreboard. We've got Friday Night Lights coverage and a whole lot more to look forward to. When we come back, we talk to Logan Judd of the North Summit Braves. Hey everyone, right now we have a very special guest. We are talking to Logan Judd over at North Summit High School. Logan, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, of course. We are super excited about this team. I mean, the beginning of the season started off a little rocky, but you've won two of your last three. And yes, or on last weekend, I apologize, you came out with a big win against Gunnison Valley. How, how's the team feeling right now? I think morale's pretty high. I think we need to carry the momentum into Milford. It's definitely going to be a tough game. But I think we can win the next two games if we just play our best football. Yeah, I definitely think that this team is kind of hitting its peak. Do you feel the same way? Do you feel like this team is is kind of reaching new heights that they didn't know that they had at the beginning of the season? Yeah, I think everyone's just really starting to, what's the word? Almost like start to click on all four cylinders, if that makes sense. No, absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about last Friday. What was it like playing Gunnison Valley, a team that coming into the game was 5-2, and two, looked like they were going to be a shoe in to honestly beat your team considering the differentials and records, the, the schedules that you two have had. And so the fact that you came out with this win was kind of an upset, I would say. And so what was it like facing them? How tough were they? Um, up front, they weren't the best, but they had a really hard runner, number 40. And it was almost more of a rugby game. It was just like everyone would file in behind the running back and just push. But up front, we stepped it up the second half and shut them down. Yeah, how difficult were they on the defensive side of the ball? I saw a highlight of Jake Smith just getting absolutely demolished. Uh, he got sacked pretty hard uh, in the backfield. How tough was their defensive line and their defense in general? Um, their ends were definitely the better part of their defensive line. And we have a, our right tackle is playing up bar C because Adrian got hurt at North Severe. So I think the end, the defensive end on that side had more experience. So I think that's what the sack was, is he just got past our right tackle. And, and so at what point, I mean, I wasn't there and I actually didn't get to see a lot of the game highlights, but I did want to ask you just a little bit about how the game played out. It was a tight game. It must have gone down to the wire. So could you kind of talk us through maybe the last couple of minutes of the game, the last quarter or so of the game? Um, so the third quarter, we went out there a lot more energy than we had the first half in we got a stop on defense, which was huge. Then we got the ball and drove down the field and scored. And then the fourth quarter was pretty intense. Just had to get a lot of big stops on uh, defense. Had to step up on the defensive line. Couldn't let them keep running the ball right up the gut. But once we got their number, we got lots of big stops, and then our offense played phenomenal. 
Yeah, the offense played absolutely phenomenal. And speaking of just the team in general, I mean, you're playing better than you've played all season. You're, you've got two of your last three games, you've gotten wins. And uh, I just kind of wanted to ask you, what has it been like kind of adjusting? I mean, being the smallest school in the Wasatch back, being in 1A and dealing with all the injuries you have, you, like you talked about, you're bringing up players from JV. Uh, you've also got uh, a handful of people uh, playing both sides of the ball. And so what is it like coming into week nine? You've got injuries. You've got players playing on both sides of the ball. I'm sure you've got players that are exhausted from the last couple of weeks of playing football. Um, what is the team's health uh, like going into week nine? Um, with Adrian and Brendan getting hurt, a lot of kids have had to step up, like a lot of underclassmen, like uh, Daxon Sargent, he stepped up when Adrian got hurt, and he played really good. Him and Caden Dudley were switching in, and they had awesome blocks. And overall, the health's pretty good of the team. I think everyone's staying pretty healthy, no injuries after Gunson. So I think the team's doing pretty well overall. Well, that's super good to hear. What has it been like playing with a team that is now playing better than they've played in quite some time, to be completely honest? Um, pretty good. Last week, practice on offense, was we played. Well, we had one of the best weeks of practice I think we've had in a long time. So I don't know. I think they had a lot of momentum going in. Last question from me, looking forward to the last couple of games of the season, how do you see those games playing out and where do you see paths to victory uh, as you're looking to win a couple more games to close out this wonderful season you've had so far? Um, Milford's going to be a tough game. I've heard they have a really strong passing game. So our corners and safeties are going to have to step up big time. And then we're going to have to get some pressure on their quarterback which I heard is really good, too. And Duchesne, I haven't watched a whole lot of film on them, but they're always a really tough team, really hard-nosed game. But I think if we can definitely get a win at both the games, if we just play our best football. Well, Lo <laughs> well Logan, we really appreciate the time. Good luck for these last couple of games, and we can't wait to continue to cover it as football season continues on. Thanks so much for the time, Logan. <laughs> And right now we have a very special guest in Adam Loomis over at PCSS. Adam, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Yeah, Blake, thanks for having me on. Well, we, we know that you have a big event coming up and just, I think it's one of them is today, right? There's a couple right. different times that you do it, but today is one of the special days that you do have it. Yep, so today will be our second of the four races um, as part of the Park City Fall Trail Series. So we kicked it off uh, last, last Thursday. And uh, it's uh, our third year of this running race for the community and um, also a fair amount of local athletes in Park City Ski and Snowboard. Uh, it's going great so far. Yeah, and so the other two, so there's going to be a third and a fourth day, I believe. Yep. Is that correct? And what days are those going to fall on? So the next one is a week from Thursday on October 6th, um, or a week from today. And then the final is October 22nd, so that's a Saturday. We're expecting that to be kind of the biggest, um, and for our final, it's rather than a typical, you know, three to four mile trail race that we've been doing on different courses, this one is a heat style race up the ski jump, the large hill ski jump. Um, the racers will be climbing on these nets or ropes that we put on the hill for snow safety. Um, and it's uh, just like a, an exciting format that just about anyone can do, but it's pretty challenging even for the fittest athletes. So they climb up this, and then, and then what else is part of the race? Or, or so it's it's one lap all the way from the bottom of the, the biggest ski jump to the top, and then actually we're going to keep going a little bit farther up to the top of um, the small alpine lift. So that adds an extra 100 meters, and that'll be the first heat, and then there'll be a, a final as well um, based on that where um, the, the fastest, fastest racers all go together and 
Um, whoever's to the top first, obviously, will win. And we'll have um, a bunch of prizes and our overall series, food trucks and that kind of thing. Have you seen a big growth in, in this race specifically? I know you kind of brought it in during COVID to make something kind of a safe race for people to be able to come to. Yeah. Now you're in your third year. Have you seen it growing every year? Yeah, definitely. Um, we started with probably around 50 racers um, at the, probably at the most at, per, per race in 2020. Um, and it was a staggered start, so people um, were spaced out. And now we're doing a mass start. Um, if people are late, they ship time so they can go later. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, yeah, big mass start and a youth race as well for, for kids. And we had over 80 racers last week. Wow, okay. And so every week, I'm assuming, are they the same racers or are there different racers every single it's week? A, it's a, a mix. You can sign up for one. Um, you can still sign up for one or two. Um, or you can sign up for the full series and you get a, a discount um, and a little bit of swag doing that. And how do people sign up for this? How do people get involved in the race and things like that? Yeah, good question. Um, if you don't see posters around town, you can go to our website, which is parkcityss.org, and it'll be right there. You'll see um, PC Fall Trail Series. And so who typically is involved in these? Who might we see at these races or who might be in the race itself? Yeah, so um, you're going to see a fair amount of um, kids from the club. Our Nordic racers are super fit. Um, some of the Schemo athletes that I coach as well. Um, and then kind of just a variety of people from the community, whether they're runners or hikers. Um, last week we actually had a few super fast guys who training in town and they're on the national uh, U.S. triathlon team. So they came out and they laid down some pretty fast times. I can't even imagine that. That's super interesting that they would come out here to do something like that. But I mean, it makes sense for their training and everything. Yeah, like they're that. here. They were training at altitude all summer and they thought, why not hop in a race? And so what is kind of the skill discrepancy? Are there like absolute professional training for triathlons, training for the games and things like that? But then are there also just your regular people who enjoy, you know, any type of race that, that is put yeah, on by you? Yeah, guys? totally. I mean, it's last week's course was four miles. This week's about three and a half miles with, again, it's on trail. It's got some climbing, but just about anyone can go out and hike it. Um, you know, you don't have to be an elite athlete by any means. Uh, it sounds like such a fun opportunity for mm -hmm. a lot of people. I'm sure the community would love to come out and things like that. How is PCSS? How are things going in terms of coaching and everything like that? Uh, we're doing really well. Numbers have been higher than ever in the last uh, couple years, and we've um, managed COVID, obviously, like, like everyone, with some difficulties, but really come out of it strong, and um, the program's only growing. So, um, yeah, we're, we're we feel fortunate. In terms of you, you coach a lot of the youth level kids and things like that around the ages of 12 to 18. Yep. What have you seen in terms of the skill level and the growth of the, the younger kids? Have you seen kind of a drop off potentially because of COVID and things like that? Or have you seen them continue to just get better and better every single year? No, I, I mean, I've definitely seen growth and improvement. Um, and that's one of the cool things about my job is the kids are just at an age where they're, they're improving pretty rapidly. Um, and now that this is going into my third winter, some of the kids that I first, when I first started coaching here, they were just kind of at a real rec level. And now they're like, it's starting to click. They're starting to take it seriously. Yeah. And will any of these kids be actually in the Park City Fall tra uh, Trail Series at all or anything like, yep. like that? Yep. Um, yeah. I would say probably six or eight of the kids that I personally coach will be there. A couple more will be volunteering. Um, so we make it. We make it a pretty big part, and that's just from the kids I coach. I would, um, there, there's definitely more. Well, Adam, we absolutely can't wait for this. So yeah. if you can't make it tonight, you can make it in the next couple of weeks here. Yep. I think it's next Thursday and then October 22nd. Is that yep. correct? Yeah. Perfect. Well, we cannot wait for this opportunity for uh, the community to come together and have this incredible series put on once again for the third year in a row. Adam, thank you so much. <laughs>The South Summit girls soccer team has not had the most ideal season, but they are continuing to grow with a strong program and a young team. I talked to one of South Summit's seniors to talk a little bit about this season and the future of the program. Hey everyone, right now we are joined by none other than Abby Pappas over at South Summit High School. And Abby, you don't get the win tonight, but it is senior night and it was a pretty solid game, a better game than you had earlier in the season. How are you feeling right now? 
feeling pretty good, honestly. We had some tough players, had some moments where we all fell down, but it was okay. We did good. We played super good and played as hard as we could. It, it was a really tough game. I mean, not only for yourself, but also for the entire team as well as Ben Lomond. A couple yellow cards, a couple red cards. I mean, it was kind of a crazy game all over the place. What, can you just kind of give your thoughts on, on what the game was like itself? Uh, I think everyone just played really good at the beginning and it was just hard and then it got too competitive and then everyone just wanted to get back at each other because when one person kicks you, you want to kick him back instead of just not saying anything. But I think the refs did well at making sure that nobody was trying to get hurt and it's overall pretty fair. Yeah, I heard you kind of talking back and forth with one of the defenders. I'm just curious if you could tell us a little bit more about what was going on there. Yeah, we did. We had some words. We had a little verbal altercation, I guess you could say. I, She just said scoreboard senior night you're losing and I said well at least we don't have to foul to win and she said scoreboard babe and I was like oh, it's okay but so then she's trying to keep her off my back you know and then I think I heard you say and it was my initial thought as well is you're doing a whole lot better than you did about three weeks ago when you played him is yeah, that correct I said well three better goals than last time because <laughs> we scored today and they only got two yeah Better than six to nothing earlier this month. So, I mean, it, it, there goes to show that the team is improving. How do you feel like the season has gone overall for your senior year? Pretty good. We've done the best we've ever done before. I've never really scored against Grantsville, but we scored again against them three times now, just this season. It was nice. And I think we're finally getting in there. We're the bottom of 3A, just the smallest. Mm -hmm. So it's hard. It takes a few more years to get up once you have to move a level. Right, and one of your big wins this year was against North Summit, who's a 2A school, who, and you, you beat them pretty handily as well. And so it goes to show that, you know, you are playing bigger schools, and so potentially it's just a fact of, you know, whose school is bigger and things like that. In terms of future competition, I know, I know you only have a couple games left, but is there anyone you're really looking forward to? Oh, yeah. So we got a new game scheduled against Providence Hall for October 4th, and it doesn't really count in our region, I guess, necessarily, but we've played them before when they were in our region, and we should win, and it'll be fun. What does the future of this team look like? What is the youth like on this team? Are there a lot of younger players that you're looking forward to in the future? Yeah, I am, actually. My grade is the last grade before they started, like, the club mm -hmm. for our little town. So all the girls have played club for a lot of extra years, so they kind of have a little bit more experience. So I think it's just good to get more years and more girls, and people seem more interested now. Well, well, it seems like the program is kind of on the up and up and continuing to grow. And again, even just at the beginning of the season compared to now, it seems like you're improving every single week. And so that's really exciting to see as well. Um, final thing is just kind of how has your senior season been? What has it been like for you to kind of represent what the Wildcats as well as have it be your last couple of weeks playing soccer for this school? Honestly, great. I somehow managed to keep my cleats the entire season. and. I have just been captain and it's been super fun. We've had little events and stuff and this is the most I've ever scored this year and I got a new position. I played defense last year so forward's fun to change it up. I actually didn't know that. Actually, I have a couple questions about that then. So so what, what has kind of been, I mean, obviously playing defense versus being a forward is much different, but how, what has it been like? How have you enjoyed it, I guess I should say? Oh, pretty good. My freshman and sophomore year, I really just played mid. I was a wing, and then I was a center, and then last year, all of a sudden, he was like, you're defense. And I was like, no way. I haven't, I never did that. And he's, then this year, they said, okay, you're offense. And I said, okay, let's go. So I just keep getting put in different positions, but I think I can just run fast. I, I think you're just a really good soccer player. I was asking a couple of boys who was the best player on the team, and they said you, and, and that was kind of my conclusion at the end of the game as well. Yeah, I mean, the soccer skill just exudes from my pores. <laughs> Every day I wake up, and I just... You know, ob obviously, just full field kicks. Yeah, for sure. All sorts of stuff. Abby, we really appreciate the time. Good luck for the rest Thanks. of the season. Great job. Well, Friday night was a big night for the Park City Miners as they took on Brighton for arguably the title of the best team in all of 5A. Despite the loss, the Miners still have a lot to look forward to. I talked to Joseph Eldridge a little bit about the remainder of the season. Hey everyone, right now we're joined by Joseph Eldridge following a tough Park City loss. It's, it's a tough game to talk about. I mean, there was a lot of ups and a lot of downs. Can you kind of just talk us through your first thoughts after the game? Um, well, pretty much we brought our heart out or we took our heart out on the first half. We did great. You know, things didn't go our, our way. Second half, we kind of got down and we just it just got to us. I mean, we never stopped fighting, but I mean, at the end of the day, we didn't come down with the win. And that's just something we got to work on as a team and just get better at. 
Never stopped fighting for sure. What was the team morale like? It seemed like players were getting more frustrated with each other as time went on. Obviously, they kept running up the score. They kept marching down the field, and we kept getting stopped three and outs. So uh, what was the morale like on the sidelines? You know, I think we were still pretty confident. I just think the defense just got just gassed. We didn't, we didn't give the defense enough break and a better opportunity for, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's kind of, yeah. I, I got to ask you a little bit about uh, the offensive dominance. I mean, the, it was kind of a tale of two halves. Let's kind of stay focused on the first yeah. half a little bit. You had a couple of beautiful touchdowns in that second quarter. What was going on in that second quarter where you were just lit up? I think it was just all the offense or the whole offense just or just firing off at all cylinders. We were just everything about it. We we're just per Mason Grover running it was perfect. Just everything about it. We we're just. Yeah. yeah. This this team, I mean, despite the loss here tonight, this team is still one of the top teams in all of 5A. You've got a big game next week. What are some of the keys to victory to getting that win next week and closing off the season with a win? Well, I think it's just our mentality and how, how hard we work this weekend. Or this week, sorry. And just if we come out hot again in the first half like we did today, then we just got to keep the, keep the energy up for the second half for next week. How tough has it been having key players like Braden Byer out, Max is out, I mean, there are, Matt, I apologize. There's a ton of key players on this team that are injured right now. Chase just got back. And so you've got to wonder where is this team going to be at health-wise if you do make the postseason? I think that we faced a lot of diversity throughout the season with her players, but I think we've overcame it great. We put players that usually don't play their like normal position, for example, Max Grizel and Miles Preston, and they have done phenomenal and stepped up to the plate. They, they have done an absolutely fantastic job. On the defensive side of the ball, you've mentioned them getting a little bit gassed as well. Who on the defensive side of the ball have you seen really step up during the second half of the season? Uh, I think definitely Chandler Kelsch, but he, I mean, he's always been a baller. And then also Mason Christensen, especially today, because he, he was just put in, he was secondary behind Miles at corner, and then Miles got switched to offense. And Mason had to step up to a plate as a junior, and he hasn't really seen the field a lot. And to face one of the better team or the best team in 5A in our region, and be able to stop play or stop throws against him and all that stuff is just blows my mind. In terms of from your perspective on the offensive side of the ball, was there anything that they did differently in the second half defensively in formations or anything like that? I think they started to figure out the run game for sure. Um, I think they were just they were definitely. Definitely weren't feeling it the first half, and then the second half, I think there's just a spark in them, and we kind of lost that. This student section is the biggest I think I've ever yeah. seen. Was that a distraction at all? No, not at all. I personally think my sophomore year uh, at Wasatch was the biggest crowd I've ever faced against, so I don't, I wasn't, it wasn't that big of a deal for me. Just got to block it out, I guess. There's only 10 teams that make the 5A playoffs this year. Do you believe you're still going to be one of those top 10 teams? I think we will, yep. Who, who are some of the other top teams in 5A who you're looking forward to if you potentially have to face them again. There's East, obviously there's Brighton. There's a couple games you want to get back. I honestly, I want to come back to this game again. I want to play Brighton, and I also want to play East. Yeah. You know. uh, for the injuries, I mean, one, the, probably the biggest one is Brayden right now. Do you know if he's going to be back and if he's going to be able to be back for playoffs? I don't think he will. I think, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but I think he's going to be getting surgery on the 11th. So he will not be coming back. Well, super unfortunate, but this team is still run through you, Mason, Chase, and there's a whole lot of offensive options despite the fact that there are injuries. Joseph Eldridge, one of the best wide receivers in the entire state. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. On Friday, we have a Week 9 football update headed into the final week of high school football, and the three-time state champion Park City hockey team is back on the ice after a long offseason. For Brent Martindale, I'm Blake O'Rooley, and we will see you all on Friday. Thank <clears throat> you.